A recent U.S. military raid in Yemen killed more than a dozen civilians, drawing the Gulf nation back into international headlines. The civil war is approaching its second anniversary. Has Yemen become the world's forgotten conflict? For the latest, CGTN's Jim Spellman joins us now. And Jim, one of the Trump administration's first national security decisions was this military raid in Yemen that left at least 15 people dead. Now the U.S. Senate is seeking a briefing on what happened there. What do we know? The, Anand, the raid happened back in late January, just a week into Donald Trump's presidency. The target was an AQAP base, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, where top leaders of the group were thought to be operating. The raid happened in the middle of the night. The U.S. commandos faced heavy resistance from the start. The Pentagon says 14 militants were killed in the ensuing raid and a cache of intelligence found in the AQAP compound. One U.S. Navy SEAL died in the fighting. But the raid also killed a number of civilians, including eight-year-old Nawar al-Awlaki. That's the American citizen daughter of Anwar al-Awlaki, the U.S.-born AQAP cleric who was killed in Yemen in a drone strike back in 2011. Difficult to pin down exactly how many civilians died in the, ta the attack. The Reuters news agency quotes local medics saying the death toll was around 30 people, including 10 women and children. Sources in Yemen and the U.S. say perhaps as many as 15 women and children were killed. A specialized U.S. military helicopter sent to extract the U.S. forces crashed near the AQAP base, injuring some of the U.S. service members. The commandos had to destroy the $70 million aircraft to keep it from falling into the terrorist hands. President Trump called the raid a success, but the U.S. military is still investigating details of the attack and many questions remain. Were adequate measures taken to protect civilians' lives? Uh, was the intelligence gathered at the camp significant enough to warrant the raid? And while we know this mission was being planned during the Obama administration, we don't know why it wasn't carried out until Trump became president. And it's unclear how this raid will affect U.S. relations with Yemen. Adding to the diplomatic strain this raid has brought about, Yemen is one of those seven countries included in Trump's travel ban, on it. All right, and Jim, amid the U.S. involvement in the region is this nearly two-year civil war. How did Yemen end up here? Yeah, so the civil war pits the Houthi rebels aligned loosely with Iran against Saudi and U.S.-backed forces aligned with President Mansour Hadi. The Houthis ousted Hadi in a coup back in 2015. He's currently living in Saudi Arabia. Neither side has been able to decisively win the war. Peace talks have stalled. The U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres traveled to the Saudi capital over the weekend trying to revive ceasefire negotiations. So whatever we can do to make resurrection of the need for people to be able to negotiate, to be able to come to a solution for the Yemeni people is something that we will always be uh, available to contribute to. Resurrection is an apt word there. Several ceasefires have been brokered by the UN in the past but have failed to hold. Adding to the chaos is this presence of al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. The, the terror group has grown in Yemen over the last six or seven years, especially after crackdowns in Saudi Arabia made it harder for the group to operate there on end. Right, and Jim, Yemen is embroiled in this civil war and facing a humanitarian crisis from that. Thousands of people have died. Millions suffer from malnutrition. What's the outlook? Yeah, as the civil war rages on, the U.N. says the death toll uh, is at least 10,000, likely much higher than that. Three million people have been displaced by the war. Hunger, malnutrition, widespread, even clean drinking water has become scarce. Yemen was already the poorest country in the Arab world. The U.N. says nearly 19 million people, that's 80 percent of the population there, are in need of humanitarian aid. U.N. are calling on all parties in the civil war to allow humanitarian aid to make it to where the civilians are suffering, but it's going to take a much larger peace agreement to bring real relief to all those suffering on it. All right, thanks, Jim. That's CGTN's Jim Spellman reporting there.